James K. Polk was the greatest president that few people have ever heard of. He is the subject today on Abbreviated Bios. I'm Stephen Yoder. James K. Polk was born on November 2nd, 1795 in Mecklenburg County, North Carolina to Sam and Jane Polk. When the day came for infant James to be baptized, Sam, a deist, got into an argument with the Presbyterian pastor and the baptism didn't happen. James would not be baptized for another 53 years. James was a sickly child. At age 17, Polk had an operation to remove urinary stones. Now, operations at that time were very deadly. Most people would uh, avoid them because of the infections that killed most uh, people who had operations. Also, this was decades before anesthesia. Polk and his operation was held down and the surgeon began cutting into a very sensitive spot to remove the calcium deposits. Somehow, Polk survived the operation. He then had the energy he never had growing up. He would, however, be sterile for the rest of his life. Polk graduated from the University of North Carolina in 1818, where he learned how to debate in the Dialectical Society. That would come in very handy in his political career. After his graduation, Polk moved to Tennessee to become a lawyer. He met and became an avid follower of Andrew Jackson. His political career would be supported and nurtured by Jackson. By 1822, Polk was seriously courting Sarah Childress. They were married on January 1st, 1824. Her upbeat personality helped Polk's political career a lot. In 1824, James was elected to the House of Representatives as a member of the Democratic Party. When Jackson became president in 1829, Polk was his biggest supporter. Jackson was Old Hickory and Polk became known as Young Hickory. Uh, he was Jackson's point man in the fight against the Second Bank of the United States. From 1835 to 1839, Polk was Speaker of the House during the end of Jackson's presidency and the first two years of Martin Van Buren's administration. As the economic depression called the Panic of 1837 took hold and made the Democrats unpopular, Polk decided to leave the House of Representatives. In 1839, Polk was elected governor of Tennessee. Almost immediately, people began pushing Polk as the vice presidential nominee with Van Buren in the presidential election of 1840. Polk not only didn't get the nomination, but he lost his reelection campaign in 1841 and lost again in 1843. It appeared his political career was over. Polk's political career was saved by an idea whose time had come and by blunders by Martin Van Buren and Henry Clay. Manifest destiny was the idea that the U.S. would inevitably expand to the Pacific Ocean and deserve to. <clears throat> President Jefferson spoke of the idea. Andrew Jackson supported it. But by 1844, the idea was supported by the majority of Americans. Martin Van Buren was a leading candidate for the Democratic nomination in 1844. He rejected the idea of annexing Texas, which had broken away from Mexico in 1836. That was the wrong answer for Democrats. Andrew Jackson pushed for Polk to be nominated, and he was. Polk campaigned on annexation of both Texas and Oregon. He made four promises. He would reduce the tariff, establish an independent treasury, settle the Oregon boundary, and acquire California. His opponent, Henry Clay, a Whig, made the same mistake Van Buren did. He was against Texas annexation. Polk won the election. Texas was annexed within a few months of Polk's inauguration. The high tariff or import tax was lowered and an independent treasury was established to bring Americans' financial system in order. Polk had campaigned on annexing all of Oregon, risking war with England. 
the campaign slogan was 5440 or fight, which would have taken Oregon way up into Canada. In practice, though, he compromised and approved a treaty splitting Oregon at the 49th parallel, which is its border today. Polk had hoped to buy California, New Mexico, and Utah from Mexico. He sent a minister, John Slidell, to offer $25 million for the territory, but Mexico's president refused to see him. Polk then sent troops under Zachary Taylor's command to a disputed borderland with Texas. Mexico could either accept the land as America's or attack. Mexico attacked and the Mexican War began. California was quickly taken by the U.S. Navy. Taylor took control of northern Mexico and Winfield Scott uh, did an amphibious invasion at Veracruz and soon occupied Mexico City. Nicholas Trist negotiated the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in which the U.S. paid Mexico 15 million for the lands they had already conquered. California was quickly taken by the U.S. Navy. Taylor took control of northern Mexico and Winfield Scott uh, did an amphibious invasion at Veracruz and soon occupied Mexico City. Nicholas Trist negotiated the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in which the U.S. paid Mexico $15 million for the lands that they had already conquered. Some thought that this was an unjust war against Mexico and would lead to more conflict over slavery. Historians believe the land acquired during the Mexican War was a major cause of the Civil War 13 years later. Polk, however, denied that slavery had any role in the war. Polk was a workaholic. He worked up to 20 hours a day during his presidency. He said, no president who performs his duties faithfully and conscientiously can have any leisure. Polk wore himself out. On his trip home to Nashville after leaving office, he contracted cholera. As he lay near death, he was finally baptized by a Methodist minister. He died on June 15, 1849. His last words were, I love you, Sarah, for all eternity, I love you. I consider James K. Polk to be one of the top five American presidents. He completed Manifest Destiny by acquiring Oregon, California, and Texas. He kept all of his promises and did it all in one term. And then he went out and died, so we didn't have to hear from him as an ex-president. What more do you want from a president? Thank you for listening to Abbreviated Bios. If you enjoy these short biographies, please subscribe to the podcast on YouTube or Rumble.